What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension from Alex Schreier that allows you to scale objects by different things. So we can use things like images or other objects in order to adjust the scale that's applied to a group of objects we select. This provides for a lot of really interesting possibilities when it comes to different kinds of shapes and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, you can download scale by tools in the SketchUp extension warehouse. You can look for it by the name scale by tools. One thing to note is this is only compatible with versions 2018 and up. So if you have an older version, this probably isn't going to work, but this is a free extension that you can download and install. Or this extension contains six different tools that you can use in order to create different kinds of um, results. So the first one is transform objects by image. And as you can see, it tells you what you do is you select several objects and then it's gonna ask you to select an image that it's gonna use to adjust the scale. So for example, let's say that I've got this, uh, this bunch of boxes right here and we wanna scale them. Well, we would come in here and we would click on transform objects by image. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask um, how we want to scale this object. So in this case, it's gonna ask if we wanna scale them in the red, green, or blue, as well as if we wanna rotate these objects. In this situation for now, I think I'm just going to tell it to use uniform scaling. And so it's also gonna ask for a multiplier, meaning how strong you want that scaling effect to be. So in this situation, we'll go ahead and set it to three. So now I'm gonna click on okay, and let's go find an image. So in this situation, I'm just gonna use my logo just to see what this is going to do. So I'm just gonna double click on it and this is gonna go through and it's gonna scale my object. And so if we look at this, you can see how it took that image and it basically scaled it based on the colors. And so you can kind of see the pattern in here. Um, you can see the white areas that were in here as well as the darker areas. You can see how those got scaled in a different way. It's a little bit low resolution for right now. So what we might do is we might undo this and then try it again, scaling along just the blue axis. So we're gonna set our scaling in blue and do it again. And so you can see how this has gone through and this has used the lights and the darks in order to scale this along this axis. Now your results kind of vary based on the image that you're using, as well as the number of shapes that are in here. So the more shapes that you had in here, the more pronounced this is gonna be. But if you zoom out, you can definitely see that shape in here, as long as you kind of have an angle to it. All right, so a little later, we're gonna look at another tool that allows us to also push pull faces by image. But for now, what we wanna do is let's take a look at this next tool, which is transform objects by attractors. And so this is an interesting, this is an interesting tool because what it allows you to do is it allows you to it allows you to basically scale an object based on the location of another object. Let's say that we wanted to scale this based on the location of some different objects. So for example, we're gonna take one of these, we're gonna make a copy of it straight up, and we're gonna make it a component. And so for this tool, it's important that you name these A. And so what this does is it looks for a component named A, and you can see that in the uh, in the uh, description over here, and it'll use that as a as an attractor. So now, if you were to select all of these, activate this tool, you can see how this is going to ask us what kind of transformation we want to apply, whether it's uniform or in blue, which is what I'm going to select, as well as the attraction scaling, as well as if it's linear, root, square, and you're just going to want to play around with those. You can also set if it increases or decreases. So in this situation, for right now, we're just going to click on OK. You can see how what that did is that scaled all of these based on the location of this object. And so if we were to undo this, run it again, and let's say now that we were to adjust this that our attraction scaling was only one foot, and then click on OK. You can see how this isn't nearly as strong of an attractor, right? So you can use that to adjust the strength of the effect. And so in addition, let's say that we were to make a copy of this. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make a copy across the way, like this. So now I have two components named A. Well now, if we were to select this, and we'll go ahead and run this again, we'll set our scaling back to five feet. 
and then click on OK, you can see how it's now going to scale all of your objects based on the location of both of these. And so you could do some really interesting things with this. So let's say, for example, that you were to come in here and make a copy of these. And so if we were to run this again, so you can use as many attractors as you want. So let's say we were to do something a little different. So let's say that we were to take this whole thing, delete all of these, and I'm just going to put this kind of in the center of this object. And then let's make a copy here and a copy here. And then run this. You can see how you can use this to get repeating patterns and other things out of your 3D shapes. And again, notice this is using the scale option in order to do that. So in addition, there's also functions in here to do this mathematically, either by power, um, so by exponential function, or by sine and cosine. And so the next two functions allow you to scale objects based on either a power function, so an exponential function, or a sine cosine function. Honestly, I'm not going to get too far into these. If you find yourself at a point where you need to use a mathematical formula in order to scale objects, this is a great tool for that. Um, I personally don't see myself doing this anytime soon, but you can come in here and do this. And what it does do is it really allows you some interesting options for scaling by those mathematical formulas formulas. So for me, the scale by sine function is really interesting. Um, it creates kind of an interesting result. But for me, I really see myself using the image stuff on this a lot more. But again, you should kind of play around with it and see what kind of results you can get. Um, I'd love to know what you think about this function and if you would use it. All right, so now we're going to look at this next option, which allows us to push pull faces by an image. All right, and so we're going to take this, we're going to push pull it based on an image of Bonnie that I have. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to select this. We're going to click on push pull faces by image. I'm going to set my max extrusion. In this case, because these are really small, we're going to keep it kind of small. So I'm going to maybe set my max extrusion to maybe like six inches. And uh, it's going to ask if we want to create new faces. Um, I'm going to set that to yes, that's fine. We're going to click on OK. And then we're just going to go find this image and we're going to run this. So it's going to go through and it's going to push pull all of these based on the colors in the image. So you're going to find that um, it push pulls like the whites the most, but uh, we'll kind of see what result we can get here. So this is a really interesting function. I would actually love to come up with an easy way to apply like a color or texture to each one of the face based on the images as well. I don't believe it contains that option, but I think that would be really cool for the results we're creating. But we'll give it a minute and then uh, we'll take a look. All right, so if we take a close look at this, you can see how this has push-pulled this based on our image. And so you can kind of see it if I bring the image over. So you can see how the Frisbee, for example, um, has been push-pulled push up a lot higher. You can see how there's a little drop in here where her nose would be. You can see the curve of her tail. So basically what this has done is this has gone through and this has push-pulled this by this image. And so one thing you might try is you might try using the extension CLF color by Z. That allows you to color things based on height in your models. And so I was able to go through and I was able to color the lights and darks um, with kind of a gradient based on their heights. So you can see how that image shows up a lot better, both from straight up and down and also from a from kind of an angle like this as well. So you may want to try that extension to color this in here to give that a little more pop, just so you can actually kind of see what's going on with the image. That's actually really cool from a straight up and down viewport when you do that. And then the last function um, does something similar. It's called move vertices by image. So for this one, what it did is it moved the faces, so it push-pulled the faces based on your image. But then the other one, what that's going to do is that's going to move vertices by an image. And so I've been kind of playing around with this one. I think there's some interesting ideas here. So one thing you might do is you might try to use this to bring height maps in. I've found you would need a fairly dense mesh in order to really get um, to really get a great result based on that. But that is one option that you could do. There's another option. You might try using this to create something like a like a cushion or something like that. 
And so to do that, we're just going to start by creating a grid. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use sandbox tools in order to do that. And then we're just going to double click inside of it. And then we're going to double click on the move vertices by image tool. We would just select all of these objects and then we would select move vertices by image. And so I'm going to set my max motion to something like, we'll call it three inches for right now. See what that does. We're going to click on OK. And then I have a grayscale cloth image that I downloaded from online. So if I double click that and adjust this, what it's going to do is it's going to move my vertices up and down based on that image. So you can see how you can use this in order to use an image like that in order to create something like a piece of cloth fairly easily. So I think this has some really interesting possible applications for creating more complex surfaces. I have not tried like subdividing these, but I think that could be pretty cool as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this real quick. But then I'm going to try using sub D in order to subdivide this to see what kind of result I can get. So if I subdivide this, it's going to go through and it's going to subdivide all of these faces. Note that sub D is a paid extension. You can see how this is going to subdivide those and everything gets a lot smoother. You could also probably scale things down a little bit if you wanted to, or you could probably also edit that image so that these aren't quite as strong. But I think it gives you some really interesting possibilities for using images to adjust your geometry inside of SketchUp as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I would love to hear your thoughts on this extension. If you have some cool, interesting uses for it, I'd love to do some videos on this in the future. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about some different applications for this as well. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.